So let's talk about promises. So on the previous video, what we've seen is how to manage asynchronous code using callbacks, which is okay, it's all right. That's the classic way that uh, in the JavaScript world we used to handle the correct execution of multiple asynchronous functions. Actually, you do some Node.js, this is still relatively popular, right? But to me, it has a problem. This goes against readability, right? You can see how many levels of nesting we can get, right? This is it's not a crazy scenario, right? We've got three or four functions that we want to call sequentially, right? So, yeah, I mean, again, that's fine. But now let's see how to do that uh, in a modern way, which is using promises. There, is, there are a few things quite interesting about promises. Um, the first one is, I think this is probably the first feature that is in JavaScript because of popular demand. So in other words, JavaScript hasn't been supporting promises until maybe two, three years ago. But in reality, people, were used to promises because of external libraries. So there was a guy who created something called the Q library. So the Q library was the first time that we started talking about promises, right? So what people did is they installed the Q library, npm install, blah, 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 and then you got promises, right? But then by popular demand, promises got introduced into the JavaScript standard, which is nice because now we don't need any plugin, we don't need any dependency, to play with promises. Now there is another controversial, uh, because there is people that is against promises, they want to introduce something called observables that you may have heard about, but that's a separate story. I'm not going to talk about observables. I'm going to talk about promises. So I'm going to rewrite the same exercise we did this morning using uh, promises. So I'm going to copy paste it first, right? So. Uh, uh, instead of creating a callback function, right, at the moment the, the pattern is obvious, you create a callback function, so whenever your asynchronous function is ready, you, you invoke the callback function. But I'm going to change the approach. I'm going to remove the callback function, and look, I'm going to return new promise, I'm going to zoom it a bit, return new promise, so that receives a callback function, which is kind of ironic because we try to avoid callback functions, but then we need to create a callback function inside. But let's do it. Resolve. And then we put our code inside of the promise. Let me format it a bit. That's it. So. The functions will return a new promise, right? And look at this argument, resolve. So this is the function that we are going to call whenever our function is completed. So for instance, instead of calling the callback function, we're just call invoke, going to invoke the resolve method. So we're going to do literally the same thing all the time. We return a new promise. We put our code inside of it, and then we call the resolve method. And once again, we return a new promise. We put the code inside, and we call the resolve method. Is you know you see the pattern? It's always the same story but what what is the benefit right because at the moment uh, we don't see any advantage of doing that it's probably on the other way around we have to, to to type more right so that just doesn't look very beneficial however i'm going to refactor that and then you'll see why promises are a much more interesting approach to asynchronous code handling than callbacks so what i'm going to do is i'm going to run this code is slow and look, I'm going to do dot then. I know some of you, you've seen that already. So then I call the, this is quick. And then I call, this is quicker. And then I call, this is quickest. That makes 
right? Just compare readability of this mess against that. I'll go there in a minute. You don't have to put function. We, we can make it more complicated if you want. But this is the simplest approach, right? You can see this is much more readable. It's very human friendly. You do something, then you do something else, then you do something else, then you do something else. Right? So this definitely helps to read the code. Let's try to run the example and see if it works. Sorry, just like the zoom in a tiny bit. Like that? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, so return new promise, blah blah blah, return new promise, blah blah blah, return new promise, blah blah blah. And that's the last one. Okay, that's fine. So let's run the example. Look, slow, quick, third, and last. So it still works, right? We managed to do the same thing but just changing the approach. What do you think? Much easier. Much easier. If you have already worked on task number 20 or so? 28. 28? No, that's way before. No. Well, maybe 20 to the fetch. Yeah, fetch, mm -hmm. yeah. So Correct. Five, so yeah. yeah, so fetch is literally using the very same syntax. So more and more JavaScript functions are following the promise principles. Does the, the dot then and everything is the same? So it, is it coming from the same principles as um, the, the this, the dot this? That's a separate thing. No, no. no. Do, do we always need to, can you go up? Yep. Uh, to use new promise? Yep. No, no, this is not a reserved word. You can type here, Christian. Right, so that's the argument of the promise, right? So if we run that, it should still work, as you can see at the bottom, right? But then, why we call it resolve? We call it resolve because of a good reason. Because in reality, in reality, we may pass a second argument called reject. If we do that, I'm going to simplify the example. I'm going just to focus on is this weak? So you can ignore the, the other methods. Actually, I'm going to move it to the bottom just to keep everything on the viewport. So look, I'm going to I'm going to ignore all the then thing is. So I'm going to do if this is slow, then um, I'm going to do console.log promise resolve. Let's see if that works. Probably, right? Thank you. Right? So you see, we got the console log inside of the is this is slow, and then as the promise is resolved, we got that. Thinking about the task where you integrate with Node, when you use fetch, I'm pretty sure that the very first time you tried, the request failed because the URL was wrong or the backend server wasn't running. I mean, this is normal. Sometimes you call functions and they fail, right? That's the beautifulness of this pattern, because instead of resolving, we could reject them. Look, if instead of calling resolve, I call reject, look at what can I do now. I can add another method here called catch. And then the console.log, oh no, something went wrong. Let's see that. If I'm correct now, this should never happen because that promise is never resolved. It's rejected. Because of that, it should run that code at the bottom. Uh, I think there is, this is not saved. Uh, 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 that's interesting. Uh, does anyone know why this is happening? It should be maybe it's error. Probably not, right? That's no, okay, okay. It's cats. Of course, it's cats. If, if, because it's, it's give back here, like. Yeah, but the, I'm I'm reacting it, right? Okay, reject with the. 
put after the resolved. So you need to pass an error, I think. No, no, no. no. Ah, right, 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 right. So I see what you mean. So you, right. So what you're talking, right, 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 right. That's a good point, actually. So what Norbert is suggesting is to do that. I'm not 100% sure, but let's have a look. This is these are the consequences of live coding. So no, you see, there is something weird here. I don't even know whether this is actually reflecting the changes. I'm clearly rejecting the promise. How would it reject? It should move on to the next side. No, no. If you reject it, it should be. I mean, the thing is that line should never happen. That should never happen, right? But that's still happening. So I mean, these things happen, right? So that's why it's time to go to JavaScript MDM promises. So, so return new promise. That's the same thing, right? That's really weird. That's what we are doing, literally. Uh, out here, sorry. The tools. Uh, let me see what's going on. Yeah, I'll do that next. Indeed, I'll do that next. Oh, wait a minute. That's very stupid, right? Of course, it's not working. Can anyone spot the stupid thing I just did? Right, I'll tell you. Function. I wasn't calling that function, right? I was calling this is slow. Yeah, you see, right? So I thought I moved it to the bottom. Yeah, that's my fault. But I thought it was something to do with the top. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay, so I'm just going to. Yeah, that's the, that's the reason, right? Okay, no problem, no problem, no problem. Sorry about that, guys. So. Let's go back to the example. So we got the then function, which is the happy path, and then we got the catch function, function, which is the unhappy path, right? Because I want to call the this is a slow function. So at the moment, it will return promise resolved. Exactly. But then, if I add the second argument, reject. Will now the promise will be resolved or rejected? Rejected, resolved. Rejected. rejected why? Is it because it's only it's resolved. It's resolved why? Yeah, because you don't call rejected. Exactly. Yeah. We declare the reject call, the reject callback, but we are not invoking it, right? It's ignored. Exactly. Exactly. However, now if I change resolve with reject, that's it. You see? Right, so this is useful when you call the backend because you want to bring a list of TV shows or whatever. Depending on what the backend returns, the promise may be resolved or rejected. Right, this why this is why this is very useful. Correct, 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 correct. So we can pass an argument, we can pass a number. So then we can say if number is bigger than 10, resolve, else, correct, reject, right, so based on that, you'll tell me, you have to get rid of that second reject, no? yep, it will be ignored, but yeah, cool, so will this be resolved or rejected, oh. what, uh, sorry, no, rejected. correct, reacted, error, and will this be resolved or rejected, Correct, right? I mean, you can see it's not very complicated. Any question? Um, what do you mean for like the try catch? Try catch. Yeah, because I've seen that in process. 
uh, try catch that's a completely separate thing I mean obviously if you're doing something risky here you can do try catch try yeah, I mean, you, you can definitely do that. You can control errors, right? So you can say if true equals true, so try. Uh, uh, right, so so try. Sorry, no, it doesn't work in that way. So try, and then we can do whatever we solve. And then we can do catch. This is, this is to control errors. So catch reject. So at the moment, our code won't blow up, probably. So because of that, if I run this example, promise should be resolved. But if I do something weird, like I do, I try to access a variable that doesn't exist, that may blow up. And let's set a breakpoint and see if that's correct. Look. That should fail exactly, right? So if you have a mistake, AASD is not defined. The code will be captured by the cats, and then consequently it will be rejected. So this is a way to control errors, right? Is there any question? Can you explain a little bit in more detail what then and catch do? There? What then and catch? They do nothing. They just wait. They just wait for how this function gets resolved. So if this function, which returns a promise, right? And that's the reason why uh, you can do the try catch. When we do return new promise, then you are telling that with this function, you can do then and you can do catch, right? The, obviously, if you have uh, three promises, like, like uh, in the beginning. And yeah, yeah, I'll go back. Let, let me go. Yeah, that's a good example. That's a good question. Let me let me go back to the previous example. Yeah, I think it was that. Let's play it. See if it works. Uh, no, Christian is not defined. That's a good error, right? <laughs> right, slow, quick, quicker, quickest. That's okay. So now you want to add a catch sentence, right? So look at what we can do. We can call a series of functions, do something, then something else, then something else, then something else, right? But then we can also control if there was any error. So at the moment, will this console log be printed? Exactly. Slow, quick, quicker, quicker, quickest. However, if in the middle of the flow, for instance, if this is quicker, if instead of resolving it, we reject it, reject, right? So let's see what happened in this particular case. Slow, quick, quicker, and then interesting. Quickest never happened, right? Why? Correct, correct. Because on the quicker one, we reject it as soon as any of these promises got rejected the flow will stop anything down exactly anything down will be ignored the flow will automatically jump to the catch block right of course we could pass arguments so for instance we could pass the reason why the promise got rejected rejected because i need a coffee right so if we do that here, you see this is a function, right? So we can pass an argument, the message, and then we can display the message. So if we run the example again, slow, quick, quicker, something went wrong, rejected because I need a coffee. Does it make sense? On the other way around, as Christian originally asked, look at, now the syntax is very sexy, right? Because 
this is slow, gets executed, and then immediately after, we call this is quick. So do you know how can we pass an argument? How can we say that whatever this is slow returns gets passed to this is quick? So the outcome of this function becomes the input of this one? Where? This is quick. This is quick. Okay, let's put an argument on this is quick. Right? I'm going to I'm going to call it Christian again. And I'm going to print Christian. But how do we send Christian from this is slow? A variable, where? This is slow. This is slow. Yeah. How do we pass an argument? How do we send the argument to the next function? <coughs> We're calling the resolve function. So we can pass an argument here, right? This argument is passed from this is slow to the next one. So if we do that, look, you've seen it? Quick task completed. Quick task completed. And then Christian is the name of the variable that gets passed from this is slow. So whenever, whenever you resolve something, you can pass an argument. And that argument will be sent to the next function. So then you tell me, how can we make this is quicker to receive an argument passed by this is quick? So this is quick. How do we send an argument from this is quick? Sorry? Resolve. Resolve what? Yeah? Okay, so I'm going to call this argument rush. So how do you pass rush to this is quicker? Should be for some. How do we do it? I mean, am I speaking... I wanted to say Chinese, but probably not the right language. Am I speaking Indian or anything like that? It's just getting a bit too, like... Well, that's the problem, right? That's why I don't like you to sit at the bottom. Because if you sit at the bottom, I need to zoom it too much. And if I zoom it too much, you see nothing, right? That's why I always ask you, please, to sit in front, because then you can see the screen. But that's a separate story, not for today. No, you, yeah. This is what it was, right? So this is quicker. So I'm going to put an argument. I'm going to call it Justin. And then what? Then we can display it here, right? On the console log. So what will this return? Quicker task should happen third. What's the value of Justin? Correct. Let's try that. Here you go. That's correct. Right? So that's the way we pass arguments from one function to the next one. It's not easier Sorry? It's not easier the first time. Yeah. Also, don't forget that this is actually a shorthand that I don't necessarily love, depending on the circumstances. But when we do that, this is a function, right? So in reality, that's what is happening under the hood. Message, message. Same thing here. New message, new message. New, new message, new, new message. Does it make any sense? We call them, and this is a function. So we can either call the function and then call our function, or just do the shortcut and just do that, right? Can you tell me one scenario where this syntax is more convenient than the shorthand? When you're using uh, 
um, stuff like that. Multiple arguments. Multiple arguments. I like that. So let me go back. Let me show you the problem first. So imagine that this is our context. And here we have a variable called let the money. And let the money is going to have I got 88 yesterday. And you didn't. Oh my god. Right? <laughs> right? It's a very aggressive, very aggressive message <laughs> by the money. So how do we pass the money to this is quick? Parentheses. Where? Here? Like that? Yeah? Like that? Are you sure? What will happen? It's okay? No, it's not okay. Exactly, exactly. If we do that, yeah, Norbert is right. We will call the function straight away. So this will be returned immediately. And that's not what we want, right? We don't want to call the function immediately. We want to call the function in a while. So how do we solve that? Yeah, that's true. That's, that's absolutely true, right? <laughs> but how? Arrow function. Something like that, right? Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Right? So now we can get the message and we can pass multiple arguments, right? We have freedom. So if I go to the this is quick function, I can get Christian and I can get what the money says, right? So then we can display both. We can display Christian, and we can display what the money says. So now, the quick task should display what Christian was. Do you remember? The message. Well, and what's the message? Say it again. Where is that message coming from? This is a slow, correct, correct, correct. That's the message, right? So that will be the first argument of the console log, Christian. And then we got the second argument, what the money says. Let's run that. You see? To the next one, this is the first argument. This is Christian. And then what the money says, I got 88 yesterday, right? Does it make sense? Yeah. Is there any question? And this is so later down, so like later down the line, we've been using this. Um, when, so like what around chapter, you said 28? Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah, so there is a task to fetch the TV shows from the back end. Mm -hmm. That will be your very first opportunity to work with promises because you will you will do that you will do a fetch the list of TV shows and then something set the state display something redirect I don't know what right. but that will be the strategy you you will follow right and fetch fetch is like the beginning stage because like you said you, you mentioned fetch a while ago but that has nothing to do with that yeah to yeah, yeah fetch fetch is a method that comes with modern JavaScript okay, okay. and it's based on promises. So the way you use fetch is very similar, right? Okay. Right. Cool. How, how often will you, will you use this? Promises. Yeah. All, the time. all the time. Yeah, all the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. Because eventually, complex JavaScript is asynchronous. <laughs> because of that, this is a very good strategy to ensure that your code follows the right sequence. Otherwise, it may be very complicated to debug the test, to see what the execution order is, right? With promises, you can definitely structure your execution flow according to your requirements. Another question? What that smile means, Vicky? Is it good or is it not good? Uh, no, because you were smiling, that's why I smile. Ah, cool. <laughs> that's a good thing, right? But do you understand that? 
Cool, sweet. Yeah. Right. Uh, yep, so no questions? Cool, that was it. Thank you, you guys. You can put this online too, right? <laughs>